This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information, or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Recording by Ted DeLorme in Fort Mill, South Carolina, during June 2006. The Canterbury Tales by Geoffrey Chaucer. Edited by D. Lang Purvis. This reading is based on the book The Canterbury Tales and Other Poems. The original text contains poems by Chaucer and a lot of notes and explanations by the editor. To view these, please click on the Gutenberg e-text link on the LibriVox catalog page of The Canterbury Tales. The Knight's Tale Willem, as older stories tellen us, there was a duke that hight Theseus. Of Athens he was lord and governor, and in his time such a conqueror that greater was there none under the sun. Full many a rich country had he won. What with his wisdom and his chivalry, he conquered all the reign of Femini. That Willem was eclept Scythia and wedded the queen Hippolyta, and brought her home with him to his country, with much glory and great solemnity, and eke her younger sister Emily, and thus with victory and with melody let I this worthy duke to Athens ride, and all his host in arms him beside. And, certes, if it ne'er too long to hear, I would have told you fully the manner how one in was the reign of Femini, by Theseus and by his chivalry, and of the great battle for the nonce betwixt Athenis and the Amazons, and how assieged was Hippolyta, uh, the fair hardy queen of Scythia, and of the feast that was at her wedding, and of the tempest at her homecoming, but all these things I must as now forbear. I have got what a f large field to air. And weak be the oxen in my plough, the remnant of my tale is long enow. I will not let an eke none of this rout. Let every fellow tell his tale about. And let's see now who shall the supper win. There, as I left, I will again begin. This duke, of whom I make mention, when he was come almost unto the town, in all his weal and in his most a pride, he was ware, and he cast his eye aside, where that there kneeled in the high way a company of ladies tway and tway, each after other, clad in clothes black, but such a cry and such a woe they make that in this world this creature living that heard of such another way menting and of this crying would they never stenten till they the rainness of his bridal henten what folk be ye that at mine home coming perturbin so my feast with crying quoth theseus have ye so great envy of mine honour, and that thus complain and cry? Or who hath you misboten or offended? Do tell me, if it may be amended. And why that ye be clad thus all in black? The oldest lady of them all then spake, when she had swooned with a deadly cheer that it was ruth for to see or hear she said lord to whom fortune hath given victory and as a conqueror to live in naught grieveth us your glory and your honour but we beseech in mercy and succour have mercy on our woe and our distress some drop of pity through thy gentleness upon us wretched women let now fall for certes lord there is none of us all that hath not been a duchess or a queen now we be caitiffs as it is well seen thank it be fortune and her false wheel that none estate insureth to be well 
and certes lord to biden your presence here in this temple of the goddess clemens we have been waiting all this for to-night now help us lord since it lies in thy might i wretched wight that weep and wail thus was willem wife to king capanias that staff at thebes cursed be that day and all we that be in this array and making all this lamentation we lost in all our husbands in that town while that the siege thereabout in lay and yet the old creon well away that lord is now of thebes the city fulfilled of ire and of iniquity he for despite and for his tyranny to do the dead body's villainy of all our lords which that had been his slaw hath all the bodies on and heap i draw and will not suffer them by none assent neither to be buried nor a brent but maketh hounds eat them in despite and with that word without more respite they fallen groff and cried in piteously have on us wretched women some mercy and let our sorrow sink in in thine heart this gentle duke down from his courser's start with heart piteous when he heard them speak him thought that his heart would all to break when he saw them so piteous and so mate that willem weren of so great estate and in his arms he them all uphent and them comforted in full good intent and swore his oath as he was true knight he would do so faithfully his might upon the tyrant creon them to wreak that all the people of greece should speak how creon was of theseus is served as he had his death full well deserved and right anon without more abode his banner he displayed and forth he rode to thebes ward and all his host beside no ne'er athens would he go nor ride nor take his ease fully half a day but onward on his way that night he lay and sent anon hippolyta the queen and emily her youngest sister sheen unto the town of athens for to dwell and forth he writ there is no more to tell the red statue of mars with spear and targe so shineth in his white banner large that all the field is glitter up and down and by his banner borne is his pinnon of gold full rich in which there was a beat the minotaur which that he slew in crete thus writ this duke thus writ this conqueror and in his host of chivalry the flower till that he came to thebes and a light fair in a field there as he thought to fight but shortly for to speaken of this thing with creon which that was of thebes king he fought and slew him manly as a knight in plain battle and put his folk to flight and by assault he won the city after and rent adown both wall and spar and rafter and to the ladies he restored again the bodies of their husbands that were slain to do obsequies as was then the guise but it were all too long for to devise that great clamour and the way menting which the ladies made at the brenning of the bodies and the great honour that theseus the noble conqueror did to the ladies when they from him went but shortly for to tell is mine intent when that this worthy duke this theseus had of bodies yon slain and one in thebes thus still in the field he took all night his rest 
and did with all the country as him lest to ransack in the tasks of bodies dead them for to strip of harness and to weed the pillars did their business and cure after the battle and discomfiture and so befell that in the task they found through girt with many a grievous bloody wound two young knights ligging by and by both in one arms wrought full richly of which two arsita height that one and he that other height palamon not fully quickly dead they were but by their coat armor and by their gear the heralds knew them well in special as those that were in of the blood royal of thebes and of sistrin too born out of the task the pillars have them torn and have them carried soft unto the tent of theseus and he full soon them sent to athens for to dwell in prison perpetually he in old no ransom and when this worthy duke had thus it done he took his host and home he writ anon with laurel crowned as a conqueror and there he lived in joy and in honour term of his life what needeth word is mo and in a tower in anguish and in woe dwell in this palamon and eke arsita for evermore there may no gold them quite thus passed year by year and day by day till it fell a once a morn of may that emily that fairer was to seen than is the lily upon his stalk green and fresher than the may with flowers new for with the rose colour strove her hue i note which was the finer of them two ere it was day as she was wont to do she was arisen and already dight for may will have no sluggardy a night the season pricketh every gentle heart and maketh him out of his sleep to start and saith arise and do thine observance this maketh emily have remembrance to do honour to may and for to rise it clothed was she fresh for to devise her yellow hair was braided in a tress behind her back a yard along i guess and in the garden at the sun up wrist she walketh up and down where as her list she gathereth flowers party white and red to make a sotel garland for her head and as an angel heavenly she sung the great tower that was so thick and strong which of the castle was the chief dungeon whereas these knights were in prison of which i told you and tell it shall was even joinant to the garden wall there as this emily had her playing bright was the sun and clear that morning and palamon this woeful prisoner as was his wont by leave of his jailer was risen and roamed in a chamber on high in which he all the noble city sigh and eke the garden full of branches green there as this fresh emilia the sheen was in her walk and roamed up and down this sorrowful prisoner this palamon went in his chamber roaming to and fro and to himself complaining of his woe that he was born full oft he said alas and so befell by adventure or cast that through a window thick of many a bar of iron great and square as any spar he cast his eyes upon emilia and therewithal he blent and cried ah as though he stung and were unto the heart and with that cry arsita anon upstart and said 
cousin mine, what aileth thee, That art so pale and deadly for to see? Why criedst thou, who hath thee done offence? For God's love take all in patience. Our prison, for it may none other be, Fortune hath given us this adversity. Some wick aspect of disposition, Of Saturn, by some constellation, Hath given us this, although we had it sworn, So stood the heaven when that we were born, We must endure, this is the short and plain. This Palamon answered, and said again, Cousin, forsooth of this opinion, Thou hast a vain imagination. This prison caused me not for to cry, But I was hurt right now through mine eye, Into mine heart, that will my bane be. The fairness of the lady that I see, Yond in the garden roaming to and fro, is cause of all my crying and my woe. I know to her she be woman or goddess, but Venus is it suitly as I guess. And therewithal on knees adown he fill and said, Venus, if it be your will, you in this garden thus to transfigure before me, sorrowful, wretched creature, out of this prison help that we may scape, And if so be our destiny be shape, By etern word to dine in prison, Of our lineage have some compassion, That is so low brought by tyranny. And with that word our seat gonna spy, Whereas this lady roam to and fro, And with that sight her beauty hurt him so, that if that Palamon was wounded sore, Our seat was hurt as much as he or more. And with a sigh he said piteously, The fresh beauty slayeth me suddenly Of her that roameth yonder in the place. And but I have her mercy and her grace That I may see her at the least way, I am but dead. There is no more to say. This Palamon, when he these words heard, Dispiteously he looked and answered, Whether sayest thou this in earnest or in play? Nay, quoth our seat, in earnest by my fay, God help me so, me lustful ill to play. This Palamon gan knit his brows tway. It were, quoth he, to thee no great honour, for to be false, nor for to be traitor to me that am thy cousin and thy brother, is sworn full deep, and each of us to other, that never for to die in the pain, till that the death departen shall us twain, neither of us in love to hinder other, nor in none other case, my liver brother. But that thou shouldest truly father me in every case, As I should father thee. This was the thine oath, And mine also certain. I wot it well, thou darest it not with saying. Thus art thou of my counsel out of doubt, And now thou wouldest falsely be about To love my lady, whom I love and serve, And ever shall, until my heart sterve. Now, certes, false Asita, thou shalt not so. I loved her first, and told thee my woe. As to my counsel and my brother sworn To father me, as I have told before but which thou art bounden as a knight to help me, if it lie in thy might, or else art thou false, I dare well sayn. This our seat of fool proudly spake again. Thou shalt, quoth he, be rather false than I, and thou art false, I tell thee utterly, for paramour I loved her first ere thou. What wilt thou say? Thou wist it not right now, whether she be a woman or a goddess. Thine is affection of holiness, 
and mine is love as to a creature for which i told thee mine aventure as to my cousin and my brother sworn i pose that thou lovest her before wast thou not well the old clerk is saw that who shall give a lover any law love is a greater law by my pen than may be given to any earthly man therefore positive law and such decree is broke away for love in each degree a man must needs love maugre his head he may not flee it though he should be dead all be she maid or widow or else wife and eke it is not likely all thy life to stand in in her grace no more than i for well thou wouldst thyself verily that thou and i be damned to prison perpetual us gaineth no ransom we strive as did the hounds for the bone they fought all day and yet their part was none there came a kite while that they were so wroth and bare away the bone betwixt them both and therefore at the king's court my brother each man for himself there is no other love if thee list for i love and i shall and suitly lever brother this is all here in this prison musten we endure and each of us take his aventure great was the strife and long between these twain if that i had leisure for to say but to the effect it happened on a day to tell it you as shortly as i may a worthy duke that hight perithous that fellow was to the duke theseus since thilke day that they were children light was come to athens his fellow to visit and for to play as he was wont to do for in this world he loved no man so and he loved him as tenderly again so well they loved as old book sayn that when that one was dead soothly to sayn his fellow went and sought him down in hell but of that story list me not to write duke perithous loved well our sight and had him known at thebes year by year and finally at request and prayer of perithous without ransom duke theseus let him out of prison freely to go wear him list all over in such a guise as i tell and shall this was the forward plain to indict betwixt theseus and him our sight that if so were that our sight were found ever in his life by day or night one stound in any country of this theseus and he were caught it was accorded thus that with a sword he should lose his head but took his leave and homeward he him sped let him beware his neck lieth to wed how great a sorrow suffereth now our sight the death he feeleth through his heart a smite he weepeth and waileth crieth piteously to slay himself he waiteth privily he said alas the day that i was born now is my prison worse than before now is me shape eternally to dwell not in purgatory but right in hell alas that ever i knew perithous for ellis had i dwelt with theseus effettered in his prison evermore then had i been in bliss and not in woe only the sight of her whom that i serve though that i never may her grace deserve would have sufficed right enough for me o oh, dear cousin palamon quoth he thine is the victory of this aventure full blissfully in prison to endure 
in prison, <laughs> nay, certes, in paradise, well hath fortune turned thee the dice, that hast the sight of her, and I the absence. For possible is, since thou hast her presence, and art a knight, a worthy and an able, that by some cast, since fortune is changeable, thou mayst to thy desire some time attain. But I, that am exiled and barren of all grace, and in so great despair, that there in his earth water fire nor air nor creature that of them make it is that may help nor comfort in this well ought i stirve in one hope and distress farewell my life my lust and my gladness alas why plainen men so in commune of purveyance of god or of fortune that giveth them full oft in many a guise well better than they can themselves devise some man desireth for to have riches that causes of his murder or great sickness and some man would out of his prison fain that in his house is of his manis slain infinite harm must be in this matter we wot never what thing we pray for here we fare as he that drunk is as a mouse a drunken man wot well he hath an house but he wot not which is the right way thither and to a drunken man the way is slither and certes in this world so fair we we seek fast after felicity but we go wrong full often truly thus we may say in all and namely i that weened and had a great opinion that if i might escape from prison then had i been in joy and perfect hell for where now i am exiled from my well since that i may not see you emily i am but dead there is no remedy upon that other side palamon when that he wist our sight was gone much sorrow maketh that the great tower resoundeth of his yelling and clamour the pure fetters on his shinnes great were of his bitter salt tears wet alas quoth he our sight cousin mine of all our strife god what the fruit is thine thou walkest now in thebes at thy large and of my woe thou givest little charge thou mayest since thou hast wisdom and manhead assemble all the folk of our kindred and make a war so sharp on this country that by some aventure or some treaty thou mayst have her to lady and to wife for whom that i must needs lose my life for as by way of possibility since thou art at thy lodge of prison free and art a lord great is thine advantage more than is mine that stirve here in a cage for i must weep and wail while that i live with all the woe that prison may me give and eke with pain that love me gives also that doubles all my torment and my woe therewith the fire of jealousy upstart within his breast and hint him by the heart so woodly that he like was to behold the box tree or the ashes dead and cold then said 
o cruel goddess that govern this world with binding of your word etern and written in the table of adamant your parliament and your eternal grant what is mankind more unto you hold than is the sheep that rooketh in the fold for slain is man right as another beast and dwelleth eke in prison and arrest and hath sickness and great adversity and oftentimes guiltless pardy what governess is in your prescience that guiltless tormenteth innocence and yet increaseth this all my penance that man is bounden to his observance for god's sake to letten of his will whereas a beast may all his lust fulfil and when a beast is dead he hath no pain but man after his death must weep and plain though in this world he have care and woe without a doubt it may stand in so the answer of this leave i to divines but well i wot that in this world great pine is alas i see a serpent or a thief that many a true man hath done mischief go at his lodge and where him list may turn but i must be in prison through saturn and eke through juno jealous and eke wood that hath well nigh destroyed all the blood of thebes with his waist wallace wide and venus slayeth me on that other side for jealousy and fear of him are sight now will i stent of palamon alight and let him in his prison still a dwell and of our seat forth i will you tell the summer passeth and the night is long increase double wise the pain is strong both of the lover and the prisoner i note which hath the woefuller mister for shortly for to say this palamon perpetually is damned to prison in chains and in fetters to be dead and our sight is exiled on his head for evermore as out of that country nor never more he shall his lady see you lovers ask i now this question who lieth the worse our sight or palamon the one may see his lady day by day but in prison he dwell must alway the other where him list may ride or go but see his lady shall he never mow now deem all as you list ye that can for i will tell you forth as i began when that our sight to thebes common was full oft a day he swelt and said alas for see this lady he shall know never mo and shortly to concluden all his woe so much sorrow had never creature that is or shall be while the world may dure his sleep his meat his drink is him by raft that lean he wex and dry as any shaft his iron hollow grisly to behold his hue sallow and pale as ashes cold and solitary he was ever alone and wailing all the night making his moan and if he heard a song or instrument then would he weepen he might not be stent so feeble were his spirits and so low and changed so that no man could know his speech neither his voice though men it heard and in his gear for all the world he fared not only like the lover's malady of eros but rather like many engendered of humours melancholic before his head in his cell fantastic and shortly turned was all upside down both habit and eke disposition of him 
this woeful lover dan our sight why should i all day of his woe indict when he endured had a year or two this cruel torment and this pain and woe at thebes in his country as i said upon a night in sleep as he him laid him thought how that the winged god mercury before him stood and bade him to be merry his sleepy yard in hand he bare upright a hat he wore upon his hair as bright arrayed was this god as he took keep and he was when that argus took his sleep and said him thus to athens shalt thou wind there is thee shapen of thy woe an end and with that word our sight woke and start now truly how sore that air me smart quoth he to athens right now will i fare nor for no dread of death shall i not spare to see my lady that i love and serve in her presence i reck not to serve and with that word he caught a great mirror and saw that changed was all his color and saw his visage all in other kind and right anon it ran him ill his mind that since his face was so disfigured of malady the which he had endured he might well if that he bare him low live in athenis evermore unknow and see his lady well nigh day by day and right anon he changed his array and clad him as a poor laborer and all alone save only a squire that knew his privity and all his cast which was disguised poorly as he was to athens is he gone the next away and to the court he went upon a day and at that gate he proffered his service to drudge and draw what so men would devise and shortly of this matter for to say in he fell in office with a chamberlain the which that dwelling was with emily for he was wise and could as soon espy of every servant which that served her well could he hew wood and water bear for he was young and mighty for the nonce and thereto he was strong and big of bones to do that any wight can him devise a year or two he was in this service page of the chamber of emily the bright and philostrate he said that he hight but half so well beloved a man as he ne'er was there never in court of his degree he was so gentle of condition that throughout all the court was his renown they said that it were a charity that theseus would enhance his degree and put him in some worshipful service there as he might his virtue exercise and thus within a while his name sprung both of his deeds and of his good tongue that theseus hath taken him so near that of his chamber he hath made him squire and gave him gold to maintain his degree and eke men brought him out of his country from year to year full privily his rent but honestly and slyly he it spent that no man wondered how that he it had and three year in this wise his life be led and bear him so in peace and eke in war that there was no man that theseus had so dear and in this bliss leave i now our sight and speak i will of palamon alight in darkness horrible and strong prison this seven year hath sitten palamon for pined what for love and for distress who feeleth double sorrow and heaviness but palamon that love distraineth so that would out of his wits he went for woe and eke thereto he is a prisoner perpetual not only for a year who could rhyme in english properly his martyrdom 
forsooth it is not i therefore i pass as lightly as i may it fell that in the seventh year in may the third night as old book is sayne that all this story tellen more plain were it by a venture or destiny as when a thing is shapen it shall be that soon after the midnight palamon by helping of a friend brake his prison and fled the city fast as he might go for he had given drink his jailer so of a clary made of a certain wine with narcotis and opia of thebes fine that all the night though that men would him shake the jailer slept he might not wake and thus he fled as fast as ever he may the night was short and fast by the day that needes cast he must himself to hide and to a grove fast there beside with dreadful foot then stalked palamon for shortly this was his opinion that in the grove he would him hide all day and in the night then would he take his way to thebes ward his friend is for to pray on theseus to help him to warre and shortly either he would lose his life or win an emily unto his wife this is the effect and his intention plain now i will turn to our sight again that little wist how nigh was his care till that fortune had brought him in the snare the busy lark the messenger of day saluteth in her song the morning gray and fiery phoebus riseth up so bright that all the orient laugheth at the sight and with his streamus drieth in the greaves the silver drops hanging on the leaves and our sight that is in the court royal with theseus his squire principal is risen and looketh on the merry day and for to do his observance to may remembering the point of his desire he on his courser starting as the fire is ridden to the fields him to play out of the court were it a mile or tway and to the grove of which i have you told by a venture his way began to hold to make him a garland of the greaves were it of woodbine or of hawthorn leaves and loud he sang against the sun so sheen o may with all thy flowers and thy green right welcome be thou fair fresh may i hope that i some green here getten may and from his courser with a lusty heart into the grove full hastily he start and in a path he roamed up and down there as by a venture this palamon was in a bush that no man might him see for sore afeard of his death was he nothing ne he knew that it was our sight god wot he would have trod it full light but sooth is said gone since full many years the field hath iron and the wood hath ears it is a full fare a man to bear him even for all day meeten men at unset stephen full little wot our sight of his fellow that was so nigh to hearken of his saw for in the bush he sitteth now full still when that our sight had roamed all his fill and sung in all the roundel lustily as do those lovers in their quaint gears now in the crop and now down in the brares now up now down as bucket in a well right as the friday suitly for to tell now shineth it and now it raineth fast right so can geary venus overcast the heartest of her folks right as her day is gearful right so changeth she array seldom is friday all the week like when our sight had a song he gan to psyche and sat him down withouten any more alas quoth he the day that i was bore 
how long juno through thy cruelty wilt thou warrain thebes the city alas it brought is to confusion the blood royal of cadm and amphion of cadmus which that was the first man that thebes built or the first town began and of the city first was crowned king of his lineage am i and his offspring by very line as of the stock royal and now i am so caitiff and so thrall that he that is my mortal enemy i serve him as his squire poorly and yet doth juno me well more shame for i dare not be no mine own name but there as i was wont to hight our sight now hight i philostrate not worth a mite alas thou fell mars and alas juno thus hath your ire our lineage all fordo save only me and wretched palamon that theseus martyreth in prison and over all this to slay me utterly love hath his fiery dart so burningly is sticked through my true careful heart that shapen was my death erst than my shot ye slay me with your eyes emily ye be the cause wherefore that i die of all the remnant of mine other care ne'er set i not the mountains of a tear so that i could do aught to your pleasance and with that word he fell down in a trance a long time and afterward upstart this palamon that thought through his heart he felt a cold sword suddenly to glide for ire he quoke no longer would he hide and when that he had heard our sight's tale as he were wood with face dead and pale he start him up out of the bushes thick and said false our sight false traitor wick now art thou hint that lovest my lady so for whom that i have all this pain and woe and art my blood and to my counsel sworn as i full oft have told thee here before and hast be japed here duke theseus and falsely changed hast thy name thus i will be dead or else thou shalt die thou shalt not love my lady emily for i will love her only and no more for i am palamon thy mortal foe and though i have no weapon in this place but out of prison am a start by grace i dread not that either thou shalt die or else thou shalt not love in emily choose which thou wilt for thou shalt not a start this our sight then with full dispiteous heart when he him knew and had his tale heard as fierce as lion pulled out a sword and said thus by god that sitteth above ne'er it that thou art sick and wood for love and eke that thou no weapon hast in this place thou shouldst never out of this grove pace that thou ne'er shouldst dine of mine hand for i defy the surety and the band which that thou sayest i have made to thee what very fool think well that love is free and i will love her more than all thy might but for thou art a worthy gentle knight and willness to darain her by battle have here my troth to-morrow i will not fail without weeting of any other wight that here i will be founden as a knight and bring harness right enough for thee and choose the best and leave the worst for me and meat and drink this night will i bring enough for thee and clothes for thy bedding and if so be that thou my lady win and slay me in this wood that i am in 
thou mayst well have thy lady as for me this palamon answered i grant it thee and thus they be departed till the morrow when each of them hath laid his faith to borrow o oh, cupid out of all a charity o oh, regna that wilt no fellow have with thee full sooth is said that love nor lordship will not his thanks have any fellowship well finden that our sight and palamon our sight is ridden on unto the town and on the morrow ere it were daylight full privily two harness hath he dight both sufficient and meet to darain and battle in the field betwixt them twain and on his horse alone as he was born he carrieth all this harness him before and in the grove at time and place is set this our sight and this palamon be met then change gan the color of their face right as the hunter in the regna of thrace that standeth at a gap with a spear when hunted is the lion or the bear and heareth him come rushing in the greaves and breaketh both the boughs and the leaves thinketh here comes my mortal enemy without fail he must be dead or i for either i must slay him at the gap or he must slay me if that me mishap so fared they in changing of their hue as far as either of them other knew there was no good day and no saluting but straight without words rehearsing ever reach of them hope to arm the other as friendly as he were his own brother and after that with sharp spears strong they foined each at other wonder long thou mightest ween that this palamon in fighting were as a wood lion and as a cruel tiger was our sight as wild boars gan they together smite that froth as white as foam for i a wood up to the ankle fought they in their blood and in this wise i let them fighting dwell and forth i will of theseus you tell the destiny minister general that executeth in the world o'er all the purveyance that god hath seen before so strong it is that though the world had sworn the contrary of a thing by yea or nay yet some time it shall fallen on a day that falleth not eft in a thousand year for certainly our appetites here be it of war or peace or hate or love all is this ruled by the sight above this mean i now by mighty theseus that for to hunten is so desirous and namely the great heart in may that in his bed there dawneth him no day that he is not glad and ready for to ride with hunt and horn and hounds by his side for in his hunting hath he such delight that it is all his joy and appetite to be himself the great heart's bane for after mars he serveth now diane clear was the day as i have told ere this and theseus with all a joy and bliss and with his hippolyta the fair queen and emily clothed all in green on hunting be they ridden royally and to the grove that stood there fast by in which there was a heart as men him told duke theseus the straight way doth hold and to the land he rideth him full right there was the heart i wont to have his flight and over a brook and so forth on his way this duke will have a course at him or tway with houndes such as him lust to command and when this duke was come to the land under the sun he looked and anon he was ware of our sight and palamon 
that fought brame as it were bullis too the bright swords went to and fro so hideously that with the least stroke it seemed that it would fell an oak but what they were nothing yet he wot this duke his courser with his spurs smote and at a start he was betwixt them two and pulled out a sword and cried ho no me for on pain of losing your head by mighty mars he shall anon be dead that smiteth any stroke that i may see but tell to me what mystery men ye be that be so hardy for to fight here without judge or other officer as though it were in lists royally this palamon answered hastily and said sir what needeth word a smo we have the death deserved both the two two woeful wretches be we and caitiffs that be a cumbered of our own lives and as thou art a rightful lord and judge so give us neither mercy nor refuge and slay me first for saint to charity but slay my fellow eke as well as me or slay her, though thou know it light this is thy mortal foe this is our sight that from thy land is banished on his head for which he hath deserved to be dead for this is he that came unto thy gate and said that he hight philostrate thus hath he japed thee full many year and thou hast made of him thy chief esquire and this is he that loveth emily for since the day is come that i shall die i make plainly my confession that i am thilke woeful palamon that hath thy prison broken wickedly i am thy mortal foe and it am i that so hot loveth emily the bright that i would die here present in her sight Therefore I ask death, and my juice, and slay my fellow eke in the same wise, for both we have deserved to be slain. This worthy duke answered anon again, and said, This is a short conclusion. To your own mouth, by your own confession, hath damned you, and I will it record it needeth not to pain you with the cord ye shall be dead by mighty mars the red the queen anon for very womanhead began to weep and so did emily and all the ladies in the company great pity was it as it thought them all that ever such a chance should befall for gentle men they were of great estate and nothing but for love was this debate they saw their bloody wounds wide and sore and cried all at once both less and more have mercy lord upon us women all and on their bare knees adown they fall and would have kissed his feet there as he stood till at the last a slaked was his mood for pity runneth soon in the gentle heart and though at first for ire he quoke and start he hath considered shortly in a clause the trespass of them both and eke the cause and although that his ire their guilt accused yet in his reason he hath them both excused as thus he thought well that every man will help himself in love if that he can and eke deliver himself out of prison of women for they wept in ever in one and eke his heart had compassion and in his gentle heart he thought anon and soft unto himself he said fie upon a lord that will have no mercy but be a lion both in word and deed to them that be in repentance and dread as well as to a proud dispiteous man 
that will maintain what he first began, that lord hath little of discretion, that in such case can no division, but weigheth pride and humbleness after one. And shortly, when his ire is thus agone, he gan to look on them with iron light, and spake these same words all on height. The God of love, ah, Benedicite, how mighty and how great a lord is he! Against his might there gain none obstacles. He may be called a god for his miracles, for he can maken at his own guise of every heart as that him list devise. Lo here this Arcite and this Palamon, that quietly were out of my prison, and might have lived in Thebes royally, and we I am their mortal enemy, and that their death lieth in my might also, and yet hath love more their eyen too. It brought them hither both for to die. Now look ye, is this not an high folly? Who may not be a fool, if but he love? Behold, for God's sake that sits above, See how they bleed. Be they not well arrayed? Thus hath their lord, the god of love, them paid. Their wages and their fees for their service. And yet they ween for to be full wise, That serve love, for aught that may befall. But this is yet the best game of all, That she for whom they have this jealousy, can them therefore as much o thank as me. She wot no more of all this hot fair, by God, than what a cuckoo or an hare. But all must be assayed, hot or cold. A man must be a fool, or young, or old. I wot it by myself full yore agone, for in my time a servant was I one, and therefore, since I know of love's pain, And what how sore it can a man distrain, And he that oft hath been caught in his last, I you forgive wholly this trespass, At request of the queen that kneeleth here, And eke of Emily, my sister dear. And ye shall both anon unto me swear, that never more ye shall my country dare, nor make war upon me night or day, but be my friends in all of that ye may. I you forgive this trespass every deal, and they him swear his asking fair and well, and him of lordship and of mercy prayed, and he them granted grace, and thus he said, to speak of royal lineage and richness, though that she were a queen or a princess, each of you both is worthy doubtless to wed when time is. But natheless, I speak as for my sister Emily, for whom ye have this strife and jealousy. Ye wot yourselves she may not wed the two at once, although ye fight for evermore. But one of you, all be him loth or leaf, he must go pipe into an ivy leaf. This is to say, she may not have you both, all be ye never so jealous nor so wroth. And therefore I you put in this degree, that each of you shall have his destiny as him is shape, and hearken in what wise. Lo, hear your end of that I shall devise, my will is this, for plain conclusion, withouten any replication. If that you liketh, take it for the best, that ever reach of you shall go where him lest, freely, without ransom or danger. And this day, fifty weeks far near, near ever reach of you shall bring a hundred knights, armed for lists up at all rights, all ready to darain her by battle, and this behate I you without fail. 
upon my troth and as i am a knight that whether of you both that hath might that is to say that whether he or thou may with his hundred as i spake of now slay his contrary or out of lists drive him shall i give emily to wife to whom that fortune gives so fair a grace the lists shall i make here in this place and god so wisely on my soul rule as i shall even judge be and true yet shall none other end with me maken than one of you shall be dead or taken and if you think it this as well is said say your advice and hold yourselves apaid this is your end and your conclusion who looketh lightly now but palamon who springeth up for joy but our sight who could it tell or who could it indite the joy that is naked in the place when theseus hath done so fair a grace but down on knees went every manner white and thanked him with all their heart's might and namely these thebans oft sigh and thus with good hope and with heart blithe they take their leave and homeward gan they ride to thebus word with his old wall is wide this ends the knight's tale part 1 the story concludes on the next file this is a librivox recording all librivox recordings are in the public domain for more information or to volunteer please visit librivox.org recording by ted delorme in fort mill south carolina during june 2006 the canterbury tales by jeffrey chaucer edited by d lang purvis this reading is based on the book the canterbury tales and other poems the original text contains poems by chaucer and a lot of notes and explanations by the editor to view these please click on the gutenberg e text link on the librivox catalog page of the canterbury tales and now we continue with the knight's tale part 2 i trow men would deem it negligence if i forgot to tell the dispense of theseus that went so busily to making up the list royally that such a noble theatre as it was i dare well say in all this world there nas the circuit a mile was about walled of stone and ditched all without round was the shape in manner of compass full of degrees the height of 60 pass that when a man was set on one degree he let it not his fellow for to see eastward there stood a gate of marble white westward right such another opposite and shortly to conclude such a place was never on earth made in so little space for in the land there was no craftsman that geometry or arithmetic can nor portrayer nor carver of images that theseus ne gave him meat and wages the theatre to make and to devise and for to do his right and sacrifice he eastward hath upon the gate above in worship of venus goddess of love done make an altar and an oratory and westward in the mind and in memory of mars he maked hath right such another that cost largely of gold a father and northward in a turret on the wall of alabaster white and red coral an oratory reach for to see in worship of dian of chastity hath theseus done work in noble wise but yet had i forgotten to devise the noble carving and the portraitures the shape the countenance of the figures that were in their oratories three first in the temple of venus mayst thou see wrought on the wall full piteous to behold the broken sleeps and the sickest cold the sacred tears 
and the waymentings, the fiery strokes of the desirings that love's servants in this life endure, the oaths that their covenants assure, pleasance and hope, desire, foolhardiness, beauty and youth and baldry and riches, charms and sorcery, leasings and flattery, dispense, business, and jealousy, that wore of yellow goldus a garland, and had a cuckoo sitting on her hand, feasts, instruments, and carols, and dances, lust and array, and all the circumstances of love, which I reckoned and reckon shall, in order, were painted on the wall, and more than I can make of mention, for soothly all the mount of Scytheron, where Venus hath her principal dwelling, was showed on the wall in portraying, with all the garden and the lustiness, nor was forgot the porter idleness, nor Narcissus the fair of Yoragon, nor yet the folly of King Solomon, nor yet the great strength of Hercules, the enchantments of Medea and Circes, nor of Turnus, the hardy fierce courage, the rich Croesus, caitiff in servage. Thus may ye see that wisdom, nor riches, beauty, nor slight, nor strength, nor hardiness, nay, may with Venus hold Champati, for as her list the world may she guide. Lo, all these folks, so caught, were in her lass, Till they for woe full often said, Alas, suffice these ensamples one or two, Although I could reckon a thousand more. The statue of Venus, glorious to see, Was naked floating in the large sea, and from the navel down all covered was with wave as green and bright as any glass. A sitole in her right hand had she, and on her head full seemly for to see a rose garland fresh and well smelling. Above her head her doves flickering before her stood her son Cupido. Upon his shoulders wingers had he too, And blind he was, as it is often seen, A bow he bare, and arrows bright and keen. Why should I not as well eke tell you all The portraiture that was upon the wall, Within the temple of mighty Mars the Red? All painted was the wall in length and bread, Like to the estress of the grisly place, that height the great temple of Mars in Thrace, in thilke gold and frosty region, there as Mars had his sovereign mansion, in which there dwelled neither man nor beast, with knotty, gnarry, barren trees old, of stubs sharp and hideous to behold, in which there ran a rumble and a saw, as though a storm should burst in every bough, and downward from an hill under a bent there stood the temple of Mars omnipotent, wrought all of burnished steel, of which the entry was long and straight and ghastly for to see. And thereout came a rage and such a vice that it made all the gates for to rise. The northern light in at the door shone, for window on the wall was there none, through which men mightn't any light discern. The doors were all of adamant etern, it clenched over thwart and end along, with iron tough, and for to make it strong, every pillar the temple to sustain was ton great of iron bright and sheen. There saw I first the dark imagining of felony, and all the compassing, the cruel ire as red as any gleed, the pick-purse 
and eke the pallid red, the smiler with the knife under the cloak, the shepin burning with the black smoke, the treason of the murdering in the bed, the open war with wounders all be bled, contic with bloody knife and sharp menace. All full of chirking was that sorry place. The slayer of himself there saw I there. His hot blood had bathed all his hair. The nail had driven in the shod at night. The cold death with mouth gaping upright. Amidst of the temple sat mischance with discomfort and sorry countenance. Eke saw I woodness laughing in his rage, armed complaint, outhes and fierce outrage, the carain in the bush with throat to cove, a thousand slain, and not of qualm estove. The tyrant with the prey by force ereft the town destroyed, that there was nothing left. Yet saw I burnt the ships upstairs, the hunter strangled with the wild bears, the sow freighting the child right in the cradle, the cook scalded for all his long ladle. Nor was forgot by the infortune of Mart, the carter overridden with his cart, under the wheel full low he lay adown. There were also of Mars' division the armorer, the bowyer, and the smith, that forgeth sharp sword is on his stith, and all above, depainted in a tower, saw I conquest, sitting in great honor, with the sharp sword over his head, hanging by a subtle etwined thread. Painted the slaughter was of Julius, of cruel Nero, and Antonius, although at that time they were yet unborn, yet was their death depainted there before. By menacing of Mars right by figure, so was it showed in that portraiture, as is depainted in the stars above, who shall be slain, or else dead for love. Sufficeth one in sample in stories old. I may not reckon them all, though I would. The statue of Mars upon a cart stood, Armed, and looked grim as he were wood, And over his head there shone two figures of stars That be clept in scriptures. That one, Puella, that other, Rubius. This god of arms was arrayed thus. A wolf there stood before him at his feet, With iron red, and of a man he eat. With subtle pencil painted was this story, In redoubting of Mars and of his glory. Now to the temple of Diane the chaste, as shortly as I can I will me haste, To tell you all the description, Depainted be the walls up and down, Of hunting and of shamefast chastity. There saw I how woeful Callistope, When that Diana grieved was with her, Was turned from a woman to a bear, And after was she made the lodestar, Thus was it painted, I can say no far. Her son is eke a star, as men may see. There saw I Dane turned into a tree. I mean not the goddess Diane, but Peneus' daughter, which that height Dane. There saw I Acteon, and heart emaked, for vengeance that he saw Diane all naked. I saw how that his hounders have him caught, and threaten him, for that they knew him not. Yet painted was a little farther more 
how Atalanta hunted the wild boar, and Meliager, and many other more, for which Diana wrought them care and woe. There saw I many another wondrous story, the which me list not drawn to memory. This goddess on an art full high was set, with small hounds all about her feet, and underneath her feet she had a moon, waxing it was, and should wane soon. In gaudy green her statue clothed was, with bow in hand and arrows in a case, her iron cast she full low adown, where Pluto hath his dark region. A woman travailing was her beforn, but for her child so long was unborn, full piteously Lucina gan she call, and said, Help, for thou mayst best of all. Well could he paint life like that it wrought, with many a florin he the hues had bought. Now be these listes made, and Theseus, that at his great cost arrayed thus the temples and the theatre every deal, when it was done, him like it wonder well. But stint I will of Theseus alight, and speak of Palamon and of our sight. The day approacheth of their returning, that ever each an hundred knights should bring, the battle to Darain, as I you told, and to Athens their covenant to hold. Hath ever each of them brought an hundred knights, well armed for the war at all rights, and sickerly there trowed many a man that never sithen that the world began for to speaken of knighthood of their hand as far as god hath maked sea and land was of so few so noble a company for every wight that loved chivalry and would his thanks have a passant name had prayed that he might be of that game and well was him that thereto chosen was, for if there fell to-morrow such a case, ye know well that every lusty knight that loveth paramour, and hath his might, were it in England or elsewhere, they would their thanks willing to be there, to fight for a lady, Benesit. It were a lusty sight for to see." and right so fared they with palamon with him there went knights many one some will be armed in an abergeon and in a breastplate and in a jipon some will have a pair of plates large and some will have a prosa shield or targ some will be armed on their leg as well some have an axe and some a mace of steel there is no new guise, but it was old. Armed they were, in, as I have you told, ever each after his opinion. There mayst thou see coming with Palamon. Lycurgus himself, the great king of Thrace, black was his beard, and manly was his face. The circles of his iron in his head, they glowed betwixt yellow and red, like a griffin looked he about, with kempt hair on his brow as stout. His limbs were great, his bronze were hard and strong, his shoulders broad, his arms round and long, and as the guise was in his country, full high upon a car of gold he stood, with four white bullets in the trace. Instead of coat armor on his harness, with yellow nails, and bright as any gold, he had a bear's skin, coal black for old. His long hair was a kimped behind his back, as any raven's feather it shone for black. A wreath of gold, arm great, of huge weight, upon his head sat, full of stones bright of fine rubies and clear diamonds. About his car there went white alarms, 
twenty and more, as great as any steer, to hunt the lion or the wild bear. And followed him with muzzle fast abound, collars of gold and torrets filed around, an hundred lords had he in his rout, armed full well with heart as stern and stout. With our sight in stories as men find, The great Emetrius, the king of Ind, Upon a steed bay, trapped in steel, Covered with cloth of gold diapered well, Came riding like the god of arms, Mars, His coat armor was a cloth of tars, Couched with pearls white and round and great, his saddle was of burnished gold, new beat, A mantlet on his shoulders hanging, Breadful of rubies red, as fires sparkling. His crisp hair like ringers was run, And that was yellow, glittering as the sun. His nose was high, his iron bright citrine. His lips were round, his color was sanguine. A few of frackness in his face a sprint, Betwixt a yellow and black some deal a mint, And as a lion he his looking cast, A five and twenty year his age I cast, His beard was well begunnen for to spring, His voice was as a trumpet thundering, Upon his head he wore of laurel green A garland fresh and lusty to be seen, Upon his hand he bare, for his delight, An eagle tame as any lily white. An hundred lords had he with him there, All armed, save their heads in all their gear, Full richly in all manner things. For trust ye well that earls, dukes, and kings Were gathered in this noble company, For love, and for increase of chivalry. About this king there ran on every part Full many a tame lion and leopard, And in this wise these lordes all and some Be on the Sunday to the city come, About a prime, and in the town alight, This Theseus, this duke, this worthy knight, When he had brought them into his city, And ended them, ever each at his degree, he feasteth them, and doth so great labor to ease in them, and do them all honor, that yet men ween that no man's wit of none estate could amend in it. The minstrelsy, the service at the feast, the great gifts to the most and least, the rich array of Theseus's palace, nor who say to first or last upon the dais, what ladies fairest be, or best dancing, Or which of them can carol best, or sing, Or who most feelingly speaketh of love, What hawk is sitting on the perch above, What hound is legging on the floor adown, Of all this now I make no mention, But of the fact that thinketh me the best, Now comes the point, and hearken if you lest. The Sunday night, ere day began to spring, When Palamon the lark heard a sing, Although it were not day by hours too, Yet sang the lark, and Palamon right though, With holy heart and with a high courage, Arose to Wenden on his pilgrimage, Unto the blissful Cythera benign, I mean Venus honorable, and dine, and in her hour he walketh forth apace, unbore to the lists where her temple was, and down he kneeleth, and with humble cheer and heart sore, he said, as ye shall hear, Fairest of fair, O lady mine of Venus, daughter to Jove and spouse of Vulcanus, Thou gladder of the mount of Cithaeron, For the love thou hadst to adorn, Have pity on my bitter tears smart, 
and take mine humble prayer to thine heart. Alas, I have no language to tell the effect nor the torment of mine hell. Mine heart may mine harm is not betray. I am so confused that I cannot say. But mercy, Lady Bright, that knowest well my thought, and seest what harm that I feel, all this, and rue upon my sore, as wisely as I shall for evermore enforce my might, thy true servant to be, and hold a war alway with chastity. That make I mine avow, so ye me help, I keep not of arms for to yelp, nor ask I not to-morrow to have victory, nor renown in this case, nor vain glory, of prize of arms blowing up and down. But I would have fully possession of Emily, and die in her service. Find thou the manner how, and in what wise, I reckon not but it may better be to have victory of them or they of me, so that I have my lady in mine arms. For though so be that Mars is god of arms, your virtue is so great in heaven above, that if you list, I shall well have my love. Thy temple will I worship evermore, and on thine altar where I ride or go, I will do sacrifice and fire's bait. And if ye will not so, my lady sweet, then I pray you, to-morrow with a spear that our sight me through the heart to bear, then reck I not when I have lost my life, though that our sight to win her to his wife, this is the effect and the end of my prayer. Give me my love, thou blissful lady dear. When the orison was done of Palamon, his sacrifice he did, and that anon, full piteously with all the circumstances. All tell I not as now his observances, but at the last the statue of Venus shook and made a sign whereby that he took that his prayer accepted was that day. For though the sign showed a delay, yet wist he well that granted was his boon, and with glad heart he went him home full soon. The third hour unequal that Palamon began to Venus's temple for to gone, up rose the sun, and up rose Emily, and to the temple of Diane gan she. Her maidens, that she thither with her lad, the incense, the clothes, and the remnant all, that to the sacrifice belong shall. The horn is full of mead, as was the guise, there lacked naught to do her sacrifice. Smoking the temple full of clothes fair, this Emily with heart debonair, her body washed with water of a well, but how she did her right I dare not tell, but it be any thing in general, and yet it were a game to hear in all. To him that meaneth well it were no charge, but it is good a man to be at large, her bright hair comb it was, untressed all, a coronet of green oak cereal, upon her head was set full fair and meet. Two fires on the altar gan she beat, and did her thingus as men may behold, in stays of Thebes, and these bookes old. When kindled was the fire, with piteous cheer, unto Diane she spake, as ye may hear. O oh, chaste goddess of the woodes green, To whom both heaven and earth and sea is seen, Queen of the realm of Pluto dark and low, Goddess of maidens that mine heart hast know Full many a year, and wast what I desire, 
to keep me from the vengeance of thine ire that Actaeon abort cruelly chaste goddess well wottest thou that i desire to be a maiden all my life nor never will i be no love nor wife i am thou wast yet of thy company a maid and love hunting and venery and for to walk in, in the woodest wild and not to be a wife and be with child nought will i know the company of man now help me, lady, since ye may and can, for those three formers that thou hast in thee, and Palamon that hath such love to me, and Egarsite that loveth me so sore, this grace I pray thee without more, as send a love and peace betwixt them two, and from me turn away their heart is so that all their hot love and their desire and all their busy torment and their fire be quaint or turned into another place and if so be thou wilt do me no grace or if my destiny be shapen so that i shall needest have one of them too so send me him that most desireth me behold goddess of clean chastity the bitter tears that on my cheeks fall since thou art maid and keeper of us all my maidenhead thou keep and well conserve and while i live a maid i will thee serve the fires burn upon the altar clear while emily was thus in her prayer but suddenly she saw a sight to quaint for right anon one of the fires gained, and quicked again, and after that anon that other fire was quaint, and all agone, and as it quaint, it made a whistling, as doth a brand wet in its burning, and at the brand's end out ran anon, as it were, bloody drops, many one, for which so sore aghast was Emily, that she was well nigh mad, and gan to cry, for she ne'er wist what it signified, but only for fear thus she cried, and wept that it was pity for to hear, and therewithal Diana gan appear, with bow in hand, right as an hunteress, and said daughter stint thine heaviness among the goddess high it is affirmed and by eternal word writ and confirmed thou shalt be wedded unto one of the that have for thee so much a care and woe but unto which of them i may not tell farewell for here i may no longer dwell the fires which that on mine altar burn shall thee declare ere that thou go hen thine aventure of love as in this case and with that word the arrows in the case of the goddess did clatter fast and ring and forth she went and made a vanishing for which this emily astonished was and said what amount is this alas i put me under thy protection diane and in thy disposition and home she went anon the next way this is the effect there is no more to say the next hour of mars following this our sight to the temple walk it is of fierce mars to do his sacrifice with all the rites of his pagan guise with piteous heart and high devotion right thus to mars he said his orison o stronger god that in the ring is old of thrace honoured art and lord ehold and hast in every ring and every land of armis all the bridle in thine hand and them fortunest as thee list devise accept of me my piteous sacrifice if so be that my youth may deserve and that my might be worthy for to serve thy godhead that i may be one of thine 
then pray i thee to rue upon my pine for thilke pain and thilke hot fire in which thou willem burnest for desire when that thou usedest the beauty of fair young venus fresh and free and haddest her in armis at thy will and though thee once on a time misfill when vulcanus had caught thee in his lass and found thee lagging by his wife alas for thilke's sorrow that was in thine heart have ruth as well upon my pain as smart i am young and uncunning as thou knowest and as i trow with love offended most that e'er was any living creature for she that doth me all this woe endure ne recketh ne'er whether i sink or fleet and well i wot ere she me mercy heat i must with strength win her in the place and well i wot without help or grace of thee nay may my strength not avail then help me lord to-morrow in my battail for thilke a fire that will burned thee as well as this fire that now burneth me and do that i to-morrow may have victory mine be the travail all thine be the glory thy sovereign temple will i most honour of any place and always most labour in thy pleasance and in thy craft is strong and in thy temple i will my banner hung and all the armors of my company and evermore until the day i die eternal fire i will before thee find and eke to this my vow i will me bind my beard my hair that hangeth long adown that never yet hath felt offension of razor nor of shears i will thee give and be thy true servant while i live now lord have ruth upon my sorrow sore give me the victory i ask no more the prayer stint of our sight of the strong the ring is on the temple door that hung and eke the doors clattered full fast of which our sata somewhat was aghast the fires burned upon the altar bright that it gan all the temple for to light a sweet smell anon the ground up gave and our sight anon his hand up half and more incense into the fire he cast with other rites more and at the last the statue of mars began his hauberk ring and with that sound he heard a murmuring full low and dim that said thus victory for which he gave to mars honour and glory and thus with joy and hope well to fare our sight anon unto his inn doth fare as fain as foul is of the brighter sun and right anon such strife there is begun for thilke granting in the heaven above betwixt venus the goddess of love and mars the stern god omnipotent that jupiter was busy it to stint till that the pale saturnus the cold that knew so many of adventures old found in his old experience such an art that he full soon hath pleased every part and sooth is said eld hath great advantage in eld is both wisdom and usage men may the old outrun but not outread saturn anon to stint the strife and dread albeit that it is against his kind of all this strife gan a remedy find my dear daughter venus quoth saturn my course that hath so wide for to turn hath more power than what any man 
Mine is the drowning in the sea so wan. Mine is the prison in the dark coat. Mine the strangling and hanging by the throat. The murmur and the churlish rebelling. The groining and the privy poisoning. I do vengeance and play in correction. I dwell in the sign of the lion. Mine is the ruin of the high halls, the falling of the towers and the walls upon the miner or the carpenter. I slew Samson in shaking the pillar. Mine also be the maladies cold, the dark treasons and the castes old. My looking is the father of pestilence. Now weep no more. I shall do diligence that Palamon, that is thine Owen knight, shall have his lady as thou hast him hight. Though Mars shall help his knight, yet nevertheless, betwixt you there must sometime be peace. All be ye not of one complexion, that each day causeth such division. I am thine ail, ready at thy will. Weep now no more, I shall thy lust fulfill. Now will I stint in of the gods above, Of Mars and of Venus, goddess of love, And tell you as plainly as I can The great effect for which that I began. Great was the feast in Athens' silk day, And eke the lusty season of that May Made every white to be in such pleasance That all that Monday jousten they and dance, And spend in it in Venus' high service. But by the cause that they should rise Early a morrow for to see that fight, Unto their rest went they that night. And on the morrow, when the day gan spring, Of horse and harness, noise and clattering, There was in the hostelries all about, And to the palace rode there many a rout, Of lordes upon steeds and palfreys. There may thou see devising of harness, So uncouth and so rich, and wrought so well, Of goldsmithry, of broding, and of steel. The shield is bright, the testers and trappures, the gold hue and helmets, hauberks, coat armures, lords in paraments on their courses, knights of retinue and esquires, nailing the spears and helmets buckling, niding of shields with laners lacing, there as need is they were nothing idle the foamy steeds upon the golden bridle gnawing and fast the armourers also with file and hammer picking to and fro yeomen on foot and knaves a many one with short staves thick as they may gone pipes trumpets necares and clarions that in the battle blow bloody sounds the palace full of people up and down their three, their ten, holding their question, divining of these Theban knights too. Some said in thus, some said it shall he so, some held in with him with the black beard, some with the bald, some with the thick haired, some said he looked grim and would fight. He had a sparth of twenty pound of weight. Thus was the hall full of divining, long after that the sun gan up spring. The great Theseus, that of his sleep is waked with minstrelsy, and noise that was maked, held yet the chamber of his palace rich, till that the Theban knightus both the lich, honoured were, and to the palace fate, Duke Theseus is at a window set, arrayed right as he were a god on a throne. The people presseth thitherward full soon, him for to see, and do him reverence, and eke to hearken his hest and his sentence. And herald on a scaffold made an oh 
till the noise of the people was ado, and when he saw the people of noise all still, thus showed he the duke's mighty will. The Lord hath of his high discretion considered that it were destruction to gentle blood to fighten in the guise of mortal battle now in this emprise. Wherefore to shape that they shall not die, he will his first purpose modify. No man, therefore, on pain of loss or life, no manner shot, nor pole-axe, nor short knife, into the lists shall send, or thither bring. Nor short sword, for to stick with point biting, no man shall draw, nor bear it by his side, and no man shall unto his fellow ride, but one course, with a sharp, a grounden spear, foin if him list on foot, himself to wear, and he that is at mischief shall be take and not slain, but be brought unto the stake that shall be ordained on either side. Thither he shall by force and there abide, and if so fall the chieftain be take on either side, or else slay his make, no longer then the tourneying shall last. God speed you, go forth and lay on fast. With longer sword and with mace fight your fill. Go now your way, this is the Lord's will. The voice of the people touched the heaven. So loud cried they with merry Stephen, God save such a lord that is so good, he willeth no destruction of blood. Up go the trumpets and the melody, and to the listus rode the company, by ordinance throughout the city large, Hanged with cloth of gold, and not with sarge, Full like a lord this noble duke gan ride, And these two Thebans upon either side. And after rode the queen, and Emily, And after them another company, Of one and other, after their degree. And thus they passed through that city, And to the listus came they by time, it was not of the day yet fully prime. When set was Theseus full rich and high, Hippolyta the queen, and Emily, And other ladies in their degrees about, Unto the Cetus presseth all the rout, And westward, through the gates under Mart, Our sight, an ache the hundred of his part, With banner red, is entered right anon, and in the self a moment Palamon is under Venus, eastward in the place, with banner white and hardy cheer and face, in all the world to seek an up and down, so even without variation, there were such companies never tway. For there was none so wise that could say that any had of other advantage of worthiness, nor of estate, nor age, so even were they chosen for to guess. And in two ranges fair they them dress, when that their names read were every one, that in their number guile were there none. Then when the gates shut, and cried was loud, Do now your devour, young knights proud! The heralds left their pricking up and down. Now ring the trumpet loud and clarion. There is no more to say, but east and west, In go the spears sadly in the rest. In go the sharper spurs into the side. There see me who can joust and who can ride. There shiver shafts upon shield is thick. He feeleth through the heart a spoon the prick, up spring the spears twenty foot on height, out go the sworders as the silver bright, the helmets they to hewn and to shred, out burst the blood with stern a stream as red, with mighty maces to the bone they to breast, he through the thickest of the throng and threst. There stumbles steed is strong, and down go all. He rolleth under foot, hath doth a ball. 
he foineth on his foe with a truncheon, and he him hurleth with his horse adown. He through the body hurt is, and sith take Maugre's head, and brought unto the stake. As forward was, right there he must abide. Another lead is on that other side, and sometime doth them Theseus to rest, them to refresh, and drinken if them lest, full oft a day hath the Cathebans too together met, and wrought each other woe. Unhorsed hath each other of them tway, there is no tiger in the vale of Galifay, when that her whelp is stole, when it is light, so cruel on the hunter as our sight, for jealous heart upon this palamon. Nor in Belmarie there is no fell lion that hunted is, or for his hunger would, or for his prey desireth so the blood as Palamon to slay his foe our sight. The jealous strokes upon their helmets abite, out runneth blood on both their sides red. Sometime an end there is of every deed, for ere the sun unto the rest went, the strong king Emetrius gan hint this Palamon as he fought with our sight, and made his sword deep in his flesh to bite, and by the force of twenty is he take unyielding, and is drawn unto the stake. And in the rescue of this Palamon the strong king Lycurgus is borne down, and king Emetrius, for all his strength, is borne out of his saddle a sword's length. So hit him Palamon, ere he were take, But all for naught he was brought to the stake. His hardy heart might him help a naught, He must abide when that he was caught, By force, and eke by composition. Who sorroweth now but woeful Palamon, That must no more go again to fight? And when that Theseus had seen that sight, Unto the folk that fought thus each one he cried, Ho, no more, for it is done. I will be true judge and not party. Our sight of Thebes shall have Emily, That by his fortune hath her fairly won. Anon there is a noise of people gone for joy of this, So loud and high withal, it seemed that the listes should fall. What can now fair Venus do above? What saith she now? What doth this queen of love but weepeth so, For wanting of her will, Till that her tears in the listes fill? She said, I am ashamed, doubtless. Saturnus said, Daughter, hold thy peace. Mars hath his will, His knight hath all his boon, but by mine head thou shalt be eased soon. And the trumpeters with the loud minstrelsy, the heralds that full loud a yell and cry, be in their joy for wail of Dan our sight. But hearken me, and stent noise alight, for what a miracle there befell anon. This fierce our sight hath off his helm a done, and on a courser for to show his face, he pricketh end along the larger place, looking upward upon this Emily, and she again him cast a friendly eye, for women as to speaken in commune, they follow all the favour of fortune, and was all his in cheer as his in heart, out of the ground a fire infernal start from Pluto sent at request of Saturn, for which his horse for fear began to turn, and leap aside, and founder as he leap, and ere that our sight may take any keep, he pite him on the pummel of his head, that in the place he lay as he were dead, his breast to bursten with his saddle-bow, as black he lay as any coal or crow, so was the blood run into his face, Anon he was iborn out of the place, With heart sore to Theseus' palace. 
Then was he carven out of his harness, And in a bed brought full fair and blithe, For he was yet in memory and alive, And always crying after Emily. Duke Theseus, with all his company, Is come home to Athens his city, With all a bliss and a great solemnity. Albeit that this aventure was fall, He would not discomfort them all. Then said Eke that Arcite should not die, He should be healed of his malady. And of another thing they were as fain, That of them all was there no one slain. All were they sorely hurt, And namely one that with a spear Was thurled his breastbone To other wounds, and to broken arms. Some hadn't salves, some hadn't charms, And pharmacies of herbs and eke salve, they dranken, for they would their lives have, For which this noble duke, as well he can, Comforteth and honoureth every man, And made revel all the long night Unto the strange lords, as was right. Nor there was holden no discomforting, But as at jousts or at attorneying, For soothly there was no discomfiture, for falling is not but an adventure, Nor to be led by force unto a stake unyielding, And with twenty knights it take one person all alone, Without mo, and harried forth by arms, foot, and toe, And eke his steed driven forth with staves, With footmen, both yeomen, and eke knaves, It was arretted him no villainy, There may no man clepen it cowardy. For which anon Duke Theseus let cry, To stenton all a rancor and envy, The gree as well on one side as the other, And either side alike as other's brother, And gave them gifts after their degree, And held a feast fully days three, And conveyed the kinges worthily Out of his town a journey largely, And home went every man the right away, there was no more but farewell, have good day. Of this battle I will no more indite, But speak of Palamon and of Arcite. Swelleth the breast of Arcite, and the sore Increaseth at his heart more and more, The clotted blood for any leechcraft corrupteth, and is in his book a laughed, That neither vain blood nor ventus sing, Nor drink of herbis may be his helping, The virtue expulsive or animal, From thilke virtue called natural, Nor may the venom void nor expel, The pipes of his lungs began to swell, And every lacert in his breast adown is shent, with venom and corruption, him gaineth neither for to get his life, vomit upward nor downward laxative, all is to burst in thilke region, nature hath now no domination, and certainly where nature will not worch, farewell physic, go bear the man to church, this all and some is, our sight must die, for which he sendeth after Emily, and Palamon, that was his cousin dear, then said he thus, as ye shall after hear, Nought may the woeful spirit in mine heart declare one point of all my sorrows smart to you, my lady that I love the most, but I bequeath the service of my ghost, to you above in every creature, Since that my life nay may no longer dure. Alas, the woe, alas, the pain is strong, That I for you have suffered, and so long. Alas, the death, alas, my Emily, Alas, departing of our company. Alas, mine heart is queen, Alas, my wife, mine heart is lady, 
ender of my life. What is this world? What ask a man to have? Now with his love, now in his colder grave, I'll one without any company. Farewell, my sweet, farewell, mine Emily. And softly take me in your arms tway, for love of God, and hearken what I say. I have here with my cousin Palamon had strife and rancor many a day agone, for love of you, and for my jealousy. And Jupiter, so is my soul agee, to speak in of a servant properly, with all the circumstances truly, that is to say, truth, honour, and knighthead, wisdom, humblest estate, and high kindred, freedom, and all that longeth to that art, so Jupiter have of my soul a part, as in this world right now I know not one so worthy to be loved as Palamon, that serveth you, and will do all his life. And if th that you shall ever be a wife, forget not Palamon, the gentle man. And with that word, his speech to fail began, for from his feet up to his breast was come the cold of death that had him over numb, and yet, moreover, in his arms too the vital strength is lost, and all ago, only the intellect, without more, that dwelled in his heart sick and sore, gan fail, when the heart felt to death, dusked his iron too, and failed his breath. But on his lady yet he cast his eye. His last word was, Mercy, Emily. His spirit changed in house, and went to there, as I came never, I cannot tell a where, Therefore I stint, I am no divinister, Of soulless find I naught in this register. Name me list not the opinions to tell Of them, though that they written where they dwell. Our sight is cold, There mars his soul a guy. Now will I speak forth of Emily. Shrieked Emily, and howled Palamon, and Theseus his sister took anon, swooning, and bare her from the corpse away. What helpeth it to tarry forth the day, to tell her how she wept both eve and morrow? For in such cases women have such sorrow, when that their husbands be from them ego, that for the more part they sorrow so, or else a fall into such malady, that at the last certainly they die. Infinite be the sorrows and the tears of older folk, and folk of tender years, in all the town, for death of this Theban. For him there weepeth both child and man. So great a weeping was there none certain, when Hector was abroad, all fresh is slain to Troy. Alas, the pity that was there, Scratching of cheeks and rending ache of hair, And haddest gold enough, and Emily. No man a man might gladden Theseus, Saving his old father Asius, That knew this world's transmutation, As he had seen it changing up and down, joy after woe and woe after gladness and shewed him example and likeness right as there died never man quoth he that he ne lived in earth in some degree right so there lived never man he said in all this world that sometime be not died this world is 
but a thoroughfare full of woe and we be pilgrims passing to and fro death is an end of every worldly sore and over all this said he yet much more to this effect full wisely to exhort the people that they should them recomfort duke theseus with all his busy cure casteth about where that the sepulture of good our sight may best make it be and eke the most honourable in his degree and at the last he took conclusion that there as first our sight and palamon had for love the battle them between that in that selva grove sweet and green there as he had his amorous desires his complaint and for love his heart of fires he would make a fire in which the office of funeral he might all accomplish and let anon command to hack and hew the oaks old and lay them on a rue in culpons well arrayed for to burn his officers with swift feet they run and ride anon at his commandment and after this duke theseus hath sent after a beer and it all over spread with cloth of gold the richest that he had and of the same suit he clad our sight upon his handes was a glove as white eke on his head a crown of laurel green and in his hand a sword full bright and keen he laid him bare the visage on the bier therewith he wept that pity was to hear and for the people should see him all when it was day he brought them to the hall that roareth of the crying and the sound then came this woeful theban palamon with slaughtery beard and ruggy ashy hairs in clothes black it dropped all with tears and passing over weeping emily the ruefulest of all the company and inasmuch the service should be the more noble and rich in its degree duke theseus set forth three steeds a bring that trapped were in steel all glittering and covered with the arms of dan our sight upon these steeds that were great and white there sat a folk of whom one bare his shield another his spear in his hand as held the third bare with him his bow turkish of brent gold was the case and harness and ride forth apace with sorrowful cheer toward the grove as ye shall after hear the noblest of the greeks that were there upon their shoulders carried the bier with slack apace and iron red and wet throughout the city by the master street that spread was all with black and wondrous high right of the same is all the street awry upon the right hand went old aegeus and on the other side duke theseus with vessels in their hand of gold full fine all full of honey milk and blood and wine eke palamon with a great company and after that came woeful emily with fire in hand as was that time the guise to do the office of funeral service high labour and full great apparelling was at the service and the pyre making that with its green top the heaven wrought and twenty fathom broad its arms strought this is to say the boughs were so broad of straw first there was laid many a load but how the pyre was maked up on height and eke the names how the trees height as oak fir birch asp alder home poplar willow elm plain ash 
box, chestnut, lind, laurel, maple, thorn, beech, hazel, yew, whipple tree. How they were felled shall not be told for me, nor how the goddess ran in up and down, disinherited of their habitation, in which they wanted had rest and peace, nymphous fawns and hamadryads, nor how the beasts and the birdies all fledden for fear when the wood gan fall, nor how the ground aghast was of the light that was not wont to see the sun abright, nor how the fire was couched first with straw, and then with dry stickers cloven in three, and then with green wood and spicery, and then with cloth of gold, and with perrier, and garlands hanging with full many a flower, the myrrh, the incense, with so sweet odour, nor how our sight lay among all this, nor what riches about his body is, nor how that Emily, as was the guise, put in the fire of funeral service, nor how she swooned when she made the fire, nor what she spake, nor what was her desire, nor what jewels men in the fire then cast, when that the fire was great and burned fast, nor how some cast their shield and some their spear, and of their vestments which that they wear, and cuppers full of wine and milk and blood into the fire that burnt as it were wood, nor how the Greeks with a huge rout three times ridden all the fire about, upon the left hand with a loud shouting, and thrice with their spears clattering, and thrice how the ladies gan to cry, nor how that lead was homeward, Emily, nor how our sight is burnt to ashes cold, nor how the like wake was a hold. All this night, nor how the Greekus play, the wake plays near keep I not to say, who wrestled best naked with oil anoint, nor who that bare him best in no disjoint, I will not tell eke how they all are gone home to Athenis when the play is done, but shortly to the point now will I wend, and maken of my long tale an end. By process and by length of certain years, all stinted is the mourning and the tears of Greeks by one general assent. Then seen me there was a parliament at Athens upon certain points and case, among the which pointus is spoken was to have with certain countries alliance and have of Thebans full obeisance. For which this noble Theseus anon let send after the gentle Palamon, on wist of him that was the cause and why, but in his black clothes sorrowfully, he came at his commandment on high, then sent to Theseus for Emily. When they were set, and hushed was all the place, and Theseus abided had a space, ere any word came from his wise breast, his eyen set he there as was his lest, and with a sad visage he sighed still, and after that right thus he said his will. The first mover of the cause above, when he first made the fair chain of love, great was the effect, and high was his intent, well wist he why, and what thereof he meant. For with that fairer chain of love he bond the fire, the air, the water, and the land, in certain bondes, that they may not flee. That same prince and mover eke, quoth he, hath stablished in this wretched world adown certain of days and duration, to all that are engendered in this place, 
over the which day they may not pace. All may they yet their day as well abridge, there needeth no authority to allege. For it is proved by experience, that, but that me list declare my sentence, that may men by this order well discern, that the mover stable is and etern. Well may men know, but that it be a fool, that every part deriveth from its whole. For nature hath not ta'en its beginning of no party nor cantle of a thing, but of a thing that perfect is and stable, descending so till it be corruptible. And therefore of his wise purveyance he hath so well beset his ordinance that species of things and progressions shall endure by successions, and not etern, withouten any lie. This mayest thou understand and see at I. Lo, the oak that hath so long a nourishing from the time that it geneth first to spring, and hath so long a life as ye may see, yet at the last he wasted is the tree. Consider, Eka, how that the hard stone under our feet, on which we tread and gone, yet wasteth, as it lieth by the way. The broad river sometime waxes stray, the great town as see we wane and wind, then may ye see that all things have an end. Of man and woman see we well also, that need us in one of the term is two, that is to say, in youth or else in age, he must be dead, the king as shall a page, some in his bed, some in the deep sea, some in the large field, as ye may see. There helpeth not all go that ilk away. Then may I say that all a thing must die. What maketh this but Jupiter the king, the which is prince and cause of all a thing, converting all unto his proper will, from which it is derived sooth to tell? And here against no creature alive of no degree availeth for to strive. Then is it wisdom, as it thinketh me, to make a virtue of necessity, and take it well that we may not eschew, and namely what to us all is due, and whoso grudgeth aught, he doth folly, and rebel is to him that all may gee. And certainly a man hath most honour to die in his excellence and flower, when he is sicker of his good name, then hath he done his friend nor him no shame. And gladder ought his friend be of his death, when with honour is yielded up his breath, than when his name appalled is for age, for all forgotten is his vassalage. Then is it best, as for a worthy fame, to die in when a man is best of name. The contrary of all this is wilfulness. Why grudge we? Why have we heaviness? That good our sight, of chivalry the flower, departed is, with duty and honour, out of this foul prison of this life. Why grudge here his cousin and his wife of his welfare that loved him so well? Can he them thank? Nay, God wot never deal. That both his soul and eke themselves offend, and yet they may their lustes not amend. What may I conclude of this long assyri? But after sorrow... I read us to be merry, and thank Jupiter for all his grace. And ere that we depart from this place, I read that we make of sorrows too one perfect joy lasting evermore. And look now where most sorrow is herein, there will I first amenden and begin. Sister, quoth he, this is my full assent, with all the vice here of my parliament, 
that gentle palamon your own knight that serveth you with will and heart and might and ever hath since first time ye him knew that ye shall of your grace upon him rue and take him for your husband and your lord lend me your hand for this is our accord let see now of your womanly pity he is a king's brother's son pardi and though he were a poor bachelor since he hath served you so many a year and had for you so great adversity it must be considered leaveth me for gentle mercy oweth to pass in right then said he thus to palamon the knight i trow there needeth little sermoning to make you assent to this thing come near and take your lady by the hand betwixt them was made anon the band that height matrimony or marriage by all the counsel of the baronage and thus with all a bliss and melody hath palamon wedded emily and god that all this wide world hath wrought send him his love that hath it dearly bought for now is palamon in all his will living in bliss in riches and in hell and emily him loves so tenderly and he her serveth all so gently that never there was word them between of jealousy nor of none other teen thus endeth palamon and emily and god save all this fair company End of the Knight's Tale